this is what's in my camera bag 2024 edition i say that this is probably not going to change much throughout the rest of the year but we'll see maybe adding a couple lenses to this setup but pretty much overall what i have right now is using this one camera bag this one is the shimoda urban explorer i have the 25 liter version like pretty much all of my gear fits in here including like a small tripod let's just start with this i bring this small tabletop tripod with me pretty much all the time and it's uh it's from pgy tech i believe this is called the mentis pod personally i, I don't like tripod but it does come in handy whenever you need them the bag itself i did a more like a thorough video about this bag so definitely check that video out if you're interested but what i have at the top compartment all the time as of now is i have this insta360 go 3 this records my pov of street photography behind the scene all these kind of things it's very small so whenever i need to vlog with it well i don't really vlog with this but i get like b-roll shots of like different angles at like smallest places like putting inside the fridge or putting like a mailbox and because it's magnetic so you can attach this to a lot of places like even this over here like this metal i can put it here and then i can record this angle because of the magnet behind of this little camera and then on the top compartment i have my ribbon sunglasses got the classic aviator glasses it's fantastic it's great and then at the back pocket i have a microfiber cloth and then my airpods i don't carry my computer all the time because it's heavy so like every day carry i don't carry it but whenever i need to i can fit my 16 inch laptop in front of this backpack and i believe with this backpack only the 25 liter and the 30 liter version can fit a 16 inch in the bag not the 20 liter the 20 liter only holds a 14 inch laptop and now let's get into the main compartment oh actually before we start this bag i have to say this again because the design is just so amazing like pretty much all photographers or most of the photographers has like a peak design capture or maybe one of them a third party company and what Shimoda did here with the strap is that you have like a separation between the capture and the actual strap so the capture doesn't hit your like shoulder bone and yeah this is what I have here and fits perfectly fine I'm super grateful for the actual design now with the main compartment I usually like to use my bag like laying it down and then open everything up this kind of style instead of using a side axis even though this bag has a side axis if you want to do that but because I carry a Canon R5 it's kind of big the side axis is just right and I just don't feel comfortable using a side axis all the time with this bag or you know this particular design I say I would imagine if you have like a smaller mirrorless camera the side axis would be perfect for that now usually well most of the time I have the Canon R5 with my 15 to 35 and if i'm at work i'll have the 24 to 70 attached to this body pretty much all the time i'm traveling i actually brought the 15 to 35 it makes more sense for myself and my shooting style really and plus like 24 to 70 it's it's an amazing lens don't get me wrong but it makes me lazy like i have a great set of range within one lens and that, that makes me not move around and not exploring to sing more so i actually like to carry around with the 15 to 35 and on top of like i can also make videos with the 15 to 35 so that's why i travel with it all the time so on the canon r5 i also have this i believe it's called the micro clutch that i use uh from peak design i'm not a huge fan of uh like the camera strap however i do have one in a bag uh, it's actually called the leash i use it from time to time whenever i need to but usually i don't i only use it whenever if like i visit a location and they actually require me to have a camera strap which actually happened to me in japan and i was quite surprised so i have the strap in the bag now all the time but i'm not a big camera strap person I'd rather use like a wrist strap or like this kind of thing this is called a clutch i think and this way i can hold the camera like this it's like an extra safety measure whenever i'm holding my camera now the the biggest downside is that when you are changing the battery on the R5, or I'm pretty sure with most of the Canon camera, you have to use this wrench down at the bottom to like turn this and then loosen up and then open the plate and then change the camera uh, battery. It does take 
quite a while. I would say like within like 20 seconds, maybe 15 if you're very used to this, like I am. But yeah, it is a extra 15 seconds to 20 seconds to uh, change your battery with this clutch, I guess. So yeah, keep that in mind, but I do like it now. Uh, took me a while to break this in. It was hurting my fingers all the time at the side over here. Now that it's, uh, it's very smooth now, it doesn't really hurt as much anymore. So yeah, give it a try if you're interested or read more reviews about it. If you're into that. And in front of the lens here, I have the Nisi filter. This is the BND filter to the five, and then in front of it is the five extra stops. Oh, actually, no, it's four extra stops. So that essentially goes from one stop to nine stop BND filter. Comes in handy whenever it's sunny. Not today though, it's a bit of overcast. And then lens-wise, since we're on top of it, I also have the Nifty 50. This is in the bag all the time because it's so small, and it doesn't take much space and add way to the bag so that's what i have in here every time and in one of the main compartment i have the cindy to 200 2.8 this lens comes in handy like whenever i need to get that compression shot it, it just it just works and it's amazing like i, I just love it and it's so small now because like you have to like zoom in like this it doesn't have like an internal zoom so it goes down to this size which fits this bag i imagine if i have the the EF version uh, that with the internal zoom it's gonna be much bigger and this way I wouldn't be able to fit it in this bag which kind of suck. I also just throw this microphone on top of my lens because there's enough room. Uh, this one's from the Sennheiser I believe this is the MKE 400. This is a shotgun microphone. I don't bring my DJI microphone with me all the time instead I've used I use this shotgun microphone because it's very useful. It's powered by battery, so um, I also do carry extra battery just in case for that. And I find this microphone very nice because it doesn't have like a wind muff on top, but it does block out like like small amount of wind. But if it's super, super windy, I would still suggest you like to have a wind muff on it. Okay, actually, I take that back. There is a wind muff with this. It comes with it, but I just never use it because I never find a scenario where I need it, maybe one day I will, you know, like a super windy place, but so far, not yet. But yeah, this is the microphone I use with the Canon R5, 1535 to vlog pretty much all the time. Now, one downside with this microphone is that you see the button out here, you can change the gain, and the button here is very easy to switch on and off. Well, oh, it's not an on and off, like switch to. And then if I have the gain all the way down, and then my microphone on the Canon R5 is just not the same volume, and it's very easy to move this. I just have to check all the time. Uh, it's a little annoying, but overall, so far, this is small, compact, and very useful. I like the sound that comes out of this microphone as well. Then down here, we have the Nissi filter pouch. In here, I have the mist filter from Nissi, and the mist filter is like quarter mist filter. And I say it's quite strong. I don't use it all the time, but it does get that blooming effect that everyone likes on YouTube, I guess. And then I have the Freewell filter, the magnetic one. I think it's called the M2. Now I have a couple ND filter here, especially the ND1000. I can attach this magnetically in front of my lens, both of my 15-35 and the 70-200 to because I have an adapter for 77mm to 82 Now on the side, I also have the CPL, which I use a lot whenever I want to cut out reflections, either like glass or even like water, things like that. That's pretty much it in this pouch. They have spare batteries at the bottom right beside the pouch. And right beside it, I have the Ricoh UR3 uh, Street Edition 28 millimeter Equiv. I have this camera all the time, either inside this bag or inside my pocket. Well, mostly inside my pocket because it's a pocketable camera amazing camera and I've made a lot of video about this camera if you're into it definitely go check them out if you're interested on the top over here we have a small compartment this is where I keep a toolkit this wrench has like different ones that I use all the time with my camera whenever I need to like screw out like a like a Arca Swiss plate or if I need to tight something that's what I use and I also have like a memory card pouch or case if you will uh, from small rig this carries pretty much all of my camera uh memory sorry not camera like memory card and right here i have the cf express type b also the sd card you can also put like micro sd cards up here so so it's really rugged 
Now camera wise, I also have this camera right in front of me right now. This is the Pocket 3 and it's actually a game changer because I don't have to vlog with my Canon R5 all the time now. Instead, I just whip out this Pocket 3 inside my pocket and honestly, and that's what I'm recording right now. The whole video is recorded on Pocket 3. I also have the DJI ND filter set that also sits in my bag all the time. And that is pretty much it of what's in my bag 2024. 